mentoring the believers or the followers of Christ from propagating the faith to the world. But as Christ has promised us and declared, declared while he was on this earth, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Secondly, the attack is against the church from inside. That is, that is what I believe distracts and derails the faith of many throughout the history of the church. More than the persecution and other form of external distractions, the church is now bombarded with different teachings that are not based on the scripture. People are thus confused by hearing variations of teachings and now the question now they question why the scripture is considered as the basis of our faith the word of god as it is revealed in the scripture is the breath or the inspiration of god or it is inspired of god first timothy chapter 3 verse 16 it says uh, for Second Timothy chapter three verse sixteen. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. The first part it says, all scripture is inspired by God. By God. In some other translation it says, all scripture is breathed. By God. First Timothy chapter four. Okay, so through the Word, we get the revelation of God. First of all, we try to find the answer to this question: Why a revelation from God is necessary? So the answer being, God is by definition inaccessible to His creature. And why is God inaccessible to his creation? There are two reasons. First of all, God is holy. God is holy, that means God is morally pure and God is the other. He is separate from his creation. Though he involves in his creation, he is separate. He is the creator. He is holy. That means in him there is not even the faintest trace of evil. He is impeccably pure without fault and uncompromisingly just. God cannot lie. He cannot make wrong decisions. He is blameless, sinless, timeless. But by contrast, we as human beings are tainted by sin. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 and in New Testament 1 John chapter 1 verse 8 attest to this fact. By all rights, a holy and righteous God must judge sinners. And Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says, the wages of the sin is death. But thankfully, we can escape the wrath of God by placing our trust in Christ Jesus as our Savior and Lord. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3. So we meditated upon this question. The second reason why a revelation of God is necessary is because as I have mentioned above, God is holy and man is flawed and a sinner before this holy God. And because of sin, he has lost contact or fellowship with God. So with his own effort, he cannot find God. And that is what Paul talks about in Romans chapter 1, verse 18 onwards. When he tries to find God with his own reasoning and his own uh, efforts, he will not find the true God. He will create a God after his own image. The address was, can a holy God reveal himself to man? Can a holy God reveal himself to man? The answer is yes. God is the creator. He is omnipotent. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. He has instilled in man the necessary functioning to receive communication from God. 
God has revealed himself to his creation through different means universally. And we talked about it in the previous sessions. There are two types of universal revelation. Number one is revelation of God through the nature around us. That's what it says in Psalm 19 verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. So through the nature, a person should know that there is a creator behind this creation. So that is, number one, the universal revelation of God. And the second universal revelation is the revelation of God through man's own conscience. So when God created man, he has instilled in him with a moral and a spiritual sense. The conscience will quite naturally have the feeling of sin, even if it is only a question of a minor disobedience. It is for this same reason that the people of the world are haunted by guilt and the need of making amends. In one way or another, human religions express the guilt of man who has offended God. And this is where the religions flourish. They are exploiting the need of man to receive forgiveness from God because of their inability to find favor from God. As they do not have righteous standing with God, they are always guilty in their conscience. Religions will offer different means to obtain favor from God, and we all know that. But the problem is people will never receive any fulfillment in their quest of receiving favor from God. Rather, Whatever they repeat, uh, whatever they uh, do, or the religions offer, they repeat it as practices without any fulfillment. So God's revelation universally through the nature and through conscience. Ideally, a man instructed by, by this twin revelations of nature and of conscience should be ready to receive salvation. But they could not come to that conclusion because of sin in them. They try to find God through their own efforts, but their efforts will end in vain, as we can see in Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to 23. Chapter 1, verse 20, it says, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen through the universe God revealed himself to man. And that's what Apostle Paul says here. His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. But, verse 21, it says, For even though they knew God, so through the revelation of God through, uh, uh, in the universe, human beings have an understanding about who God is, in the sense there is a creator behind this creation. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculation, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, because they exchanged the glory of incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man. That's what I say. That's why I said when man tries to find God with his own might and wisdom and reasoning, he will create a God after his own image. That's what it says there. Exchange the glory of incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures. Now, talking, the, talking about the revelation of God throughout the history since the fall of mankind, there were different ways God revealed himself to man. And first is a theological word. We already discussed about it. Theophanies, that means appearances of deity. We can see it in, in the life of Abraham when God revealed himself to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and Gideon. These are examples we see in the scripture where God appeared directly in the disguise or in the guise of the angel of the Lord. And through dreams and vision, God appeared. Next is through dreams and vision to Jacob, to Daniel, to Solomon, to Joseph, husband of Mary, we see God appeared to them in dreams and vision. And to prophet um, Balaam, even though he was a corrupted prophet, God appeared to him. We don't see 
in which, which way he appeared to him. It's a direct revelation of God. And through miracles and signs, God revealed himself to man. Through the judgment of, uh, uh, judgment of flood in Noah's time and the salvation of Noah and his family, we see God speaking to man. There is miracle and there is signs. Miracle is God's intervention in the human history, and there is a sign behind it. That's why all of the miracles that Jesus performed was a sign pointing towards him as Messiah. As Messiah. So that's why Jesus performed the miracle during his uh, earthly ministry. He was showing, he was showing the people of Israel that he is the Messiah. So miracles are always signs pointing toward to a message. So the judgment of the flood in Noah's time and the salvation of Noah and his family, what is the sign in that judgment? That God is holy and he will surely judge those who are sinners. And in, in that uh, uh, generation, there were a little uh, family of eight who found favor in the eyes of the Lord and God preserved them. That's the sign behind that judgment or that miracle. Uh, next one, destruction of Sodom and the preservation of Lot, the plagues in Egypt, the pillar of clouds, cloud for the Israelites, the miracles God performed for the people of Israel in the desert, and the deliverance of the people of Israel from Egypt. Through all these, God, he was speaking to man. And the next is through the prophets, God having revealed himself to individuals chosen for his service, send, <coughs> sends them to make known to the people what they have heard. There are a lot of prophets that we see in the Old Testament, Samuel being the, the, the major prophet, and we see another prophet, Isaiah. All these prophets are individuals selected by, chosen by God, and God in his sovereignty revealed his will and message to the people through these prophets. And next, and the final revelation of God is in Jesus Christ. So, what all are the revelations that we can see throughout the history after the fall of mankind? Theophanies, that means appearance of deity directly to man, and then through dreams and vision, through miracles and signs, and through prophets, and next, and the final revelation of God is in Jesus Christ. So all of the other revelations of God were only indirect. There, it was not directly to people. It was fragmentary. That means God was not revealing his full self through a prophet. He was not. He was giving a message through them. So they were in the, indeed given to man with the intention of reminding him of God, a God who is holy and who but still desires to have a fellowship with them. He was revealing his heart to people. And he was revealing his will. And he was revealing his instruction to people. But it was only fragmentary. But those, those revelations picture him as far away and invisible. And that's why prophet Isaiah cried out in chapter 45, Isaiah chapter 45, can somebody read it? 45 chapter, uh, Isaiah chapter 45 verse 15. Because they see a God who is far away. Who hide yourself. Okay, continue. It says here, thank you, truly you are a God who hides himself, a God of Israel, Savior. He's crying out. 63, verse 17, we see Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, again talking about God. Why, O oh Lord, do you cause us to stray from your ways and harden our heart from fearing you? Return for the sake of your servant, the tribes of your heritage. He is crying out to the Lord to return to them. So they got a revelation of God who is far away, even though he's speaking to them through prophets and uh, through incidents in history. 
and Isaiah chapter 64, verse 1, it says, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down that the mountains might quake at your presence. Now, in response to it, the same prophet records God's response in Isaiah chapter 35, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 35, verse 4, it says, Encourage the exhausted and strengthen the feeble. Say to those with anxious heart, Take courage, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. The recompense of God will come, but he will save you. Jesus Christ is God incarnate, the eternal word made flesh. He does not bring, bring to us revelation of God. He himself is the revelation. Because he is 100% God. John chapter 1, verse 18. Gospel according to John chapter 1, verse 18, it says, no one has seen God at any time. It's an absolute statement. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten God who is in the bosom of the Father, He has explained Him. Talking about Jesus. So Jesus Christ is 100% God incarnate, the eternal Word made flesh. He does not simply bring us a new revelation. He is Himself this revelation. And you can refer to other verses like Matthew chapter 11, verse 27, John chapter 14, John chapter 14, verse 9. Jesus said to him, Have I been so long with you, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. What a marvelous statement it is. God on foot. 100% God on foot. He's saying, he who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? He is himself this revelation. He is the revelation of God, thereby manifested in him, is all the divine attribute. When we, when we talk about the attributes of God, we talk about the omnipotence and omniscience, omnipresence, uh, absolute holiness, perfect love, and wholesomeness. There is nothing lacking in him. Jesus Christ is 100% incarnate of God. He himself is a revelation of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, but by his doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. There we can see the salvation. Salvation, as we know through the scripture, it is a three-part process. We are saved now. We are being saved and we will be saved. In the sense we are saved, that's for sure. We should have the assurance of salvation in us. We are not walking as if we are going to fall. No, we should have the assurance of salvation because this is not something that we have earned by ourselves. It is something that we have been given by the grace of God. We should have that assurance of salvation. We are saved, not by our works. It is His doing. It says in 30, verse 30, by, but by His doing, you are in Christ Jesus. We are in Christ Jesus. Not because of our works, but by the completed work of Christ at the cross. It says here, you are in Christ Jesus because of his doing. And he, talking about Jesus, became to us wisdom from God. No one can uh, reason this salvation, the process of salvation. No human wisdom can reason it out. This is the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. This is the wisdom from God. And he became to us righteousness and sanctification and redemption. This is the wisdom of God. This is the revelation of God. 
I mean, when we come into the presence of God, this, is, this should be the only one reason to praise Him. And we cannot, uh, you know, uh, uh, comprehend. Still we cannot comprehend. We are in Christ Jesus, but we still cannot comprehend the marvelousness of the salvation experience. Because this is not our doing. This is the wisdom of God. So, talking about the revelation of God from after the fall of mankind, throughout the history of man, the theophanies, the revelation of God through dreams and vision, miracles and signs, and the prophet gathering up and transcribing one by one the hints of the mysteries which the Lord will to make known to them. These were all partial revelation of this great and sovereign God. But the Father had no secrets from Son. The Son is Himself the mystery of God. Can somebody read Colossians chapter 2, verse 3? Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. I'll read it. That their hearts may be encouraged, having been knit together in love and attaining to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding, resulting in a true knowledge of God's mystery that is Christ himself. That is, the Christ, that is Christ himself. The Son is himself the mystery of God. That is why the epistle, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 is very important. We are in this new covenant. The old covenant has been done. We are not under law. We are under grace. We are under this new covenant. And the, all the revelations that God had throughout the history of mankind is summed up in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. It says, God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers in prophets, in many portions and in many ways, I already explained in many ways, in which all ways God revealed himself throughout the history to mankind. Through prophets and through dreams and, and through miracles, through signs and through direct appearance, through theophanies, that means appearance of God in the name of the angel of the Lord. All these were fragmentary. And it says here, God spoke Long ago to fathers and prophets in many portions and in many ways. Verse 2. In these last days has spoken to us through his son. Through his son. Whom he appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the world. In Jesus Christ, God's words have been acts. He gave a demonstration of his love and righteousness by providing there at the cross full amends or atonement for our sins. Romans chapter 5 verse 8, it says, God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He kept his promise of eternal life by raising up his son from among the dead. Christ, fully God, manifested, hear me very clearly, is therefore not only the end of the law, Romans chapter 10 verse 4, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So he is not only the end of the law, but also the consummation or the completion of God's revelation. You want to know more about God? Know more about Christ, because he is the consummation of God's revelation. And he is the very heart of it, since it was his spirit who inspired all prophecy. So when we talk about Christ, he is the 100% complete revelation of God. Amen? So may God bless us with these uh, words. And I request... Uh, Never mind to pray.
Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 